Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. In the interest of your safety and enjoyment of today's events, please listen to the following message. According to New York State law, there is no smoking in the event center. For your safety, please note that fire exits are clearly marked by exit signs. Kindly take a moment to identify the location of the fire exit nearest you, keeping in mind that it may be behind you. In the event of an emergency, an alarm will sound and you should calmly and safely exit the building at that time. Thank you.
I'm Grand Marshal Fernando Guzman, and I call to order the commencement of the Thomas J. Watson School of Engineering and Applied Science of the State University of New York at Binghamton. Everyone, please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. We welcome you to join vocalist Lindsey Brown in singing the national anthem. Watson, woo! 2017, you did it! As president of Binghamton University, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the Thomas J. Watson School of Engineering and Applied Science Commencement Ceremony. This is a special ceremony as we bring together our baccalaureate candidates for graduation, as well as their families and their friends. Congratulations to you all. But before we proceed with our program, I would like to welcome members of the Binghamton University Council who are joining us today. Linda Beamer, Catherine Grant Madigan, Dennis McCabe, and Ryan Shepard, student representative. Thank you very much. I would also like to introduce our other special guests. They will stand as I call their names. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. John Bay, Associate Dean. Valerie Hampton, Chief Diversity Officer. James Brochart, Vice President for Advancement. Courtney Ignari, Chair, Professional Staff Senate. Curtis Kendrick, Dean, University Libraries. Gary Keibel, Alumni Association President. Michael McGough, Senior Vice Provost and Chief Financial Officer. Wei Yi Meng, Professor and Chair, Computer Science. Ronald Miles, Distinguished Professor and Chair, Mechanical Engineering. Pamela Mission, Associate Professor, Faculty Advisor to the President. Joanne Navarro, Vice President for Operations. Donald Neiman, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. Peter Partell, Associate Dean, Mark Pollux, Professor, System Science and Industrial Engineering. Brian Rose, Vice President for Student Affairs. Krishna Swami Srihari, Dean, Thomas J. Watson School of Engineering and Applied Science. Douglas Somerville, Professor and Chair, Electrical and Computer Engineering. Kaming Ye, Professor and Chair, Biomedical Engineering. And welcome as well to Geraldine Noel McDonald, who received an honorary degree yesterday 
at the graduate school commencement ceremony. Please join me in applauding these special guests. Let me also recognize all of the esteemed faculty members who have mentored and guided our graduates. Your efforts have been crucial to the intellectual growth and achievements that we celebrate today. Will all faculty on the stage and in the audience please rise? Join me as we applaud their support of and dedication to the success of our students. I would also like to recognize our graduates who earned doctoral degrees yesterday evening, the highest degree conferred by the university. One of our graduates is in attendance today, seated on the faculty, with the faculty on stage. They were hooded last night. I'd like them to please stand and be recognized. And I would like to thank the Binghamton University Wind Symphony, our vocalist, and the Edward, Edward Maloney Memorial Pipe Band for their participation in today's celebration. This is a joyous time for all of us. However, in a campus as large as our university, it happens that nearly every year, there are students, staff, and faculty who have passed away over the course of the academic year. Our campus is a close-knit community, and we grieve the loss of our young and talented students and of our experienced and dedicated faculty and staff. Please join me in a moment of silence in remembrance of them. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm now in my fifth year as president of this great institution. I guess I'm either a super senior or a first year graduate student. And over these five years, our commencement ceremony has become my favorite activity of the year. When I see the sense of pride that each of you has in this accomplishment, I can't help but reflect on my own experience when I received my diploma. What I remember was a tremendous sense of accomplishment as well as relief in completing a long and taxing job I felt as if I had climbed a mountain and could now look out on a future filled with opportunities. This degree and the knowledge and talents that it represents will enable you to go far. You have proven that you have the broad perspectives to understand and to empathize, that you have the ability and the tenacity to work through difficult challenges, and that you have the vision and ingenuity to develop innovative solutions to the world's problems. As graduates, the possibilities open to you have increased exponentially, yet as my mother told me when I graduated many years ago, it's not the degree that it's important, it's what you do with it that matters. So I'm excited to think about your future and what it holds for you and for the world. However, before you take the first steps into that future, I hope you'll take some time to savor your accomplishments and especially to reflect on what this means to your friends and your family. Share your happiness with them. Introduce them to your professors and spend the day perhaps walking through the nature preserve. Take pictures with Baxter if you can find him and soak up some sun on the Peace Quad if it comes out. 10 or 20 years from now when you reflect on your time at Binghamton, these are the people and places that will mean the most to you. And tonight, go to a good restaurant because mom and dad are paying and enjoy a long meal in celebration. But most of all, be sure to tell everyone how much their support means to you. Give everyone a big hug. And before you sleep tonight, be sure to think about all the great moments, the signposts that led up to today. The future starts tomorrow, but today let's just relax and have fun. You've earned it. It's now my pleasure to introduce Provost Donald Neiman. Good morning. Is anybody out there? Good morning. 
That's better. That's better. This is a great day. You should all be very excited. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to commencement and to be among the first to congratulate you, members of the class of 2017. Congratulations. You are truly a remarkable group of students. At the time you applied to Binghamton, you demonstrated that you had the academic ability to succeed at one of the best and most competitive public universities in the United States. And since you arrived on campus, whether as a freshman or a transfer student, you have not only shown that you are very bright, You've demonstrated that you're hardworking, intellectually curious, and eager to make the most of what this great university has to offer. You've also shown that you have a wonderful sense of humor, like to have fun, and care about serving others. You embody the balance that makes Binghamton University such a wonderful place to work and to study. Congratulations to you. It has been a pleasure to have you as our students. I want to congratulate you on your many accomplishments and ask that you stay in touch with us and keep us informed of the many accomplishments that are in the future for all of you. Now, it's my great pleasure to introduce my colleague, SUNY Distinguished Professor and Dean of the Watson School, Krishnaswamy Srihari. Good morning. I am Hari Srihari, Dean of the Thomas J. Watson School of Engineering and Applied Science. Let me add to the remarks of our President and Provost and congratulate you all, today's Watson School graduates. This is perhaps our largest graduating class. As you leave our portals, there is absolutely no doubt that your academic success is an outcome of your sustained and focused hard work. Your diligence has been critical to your success here at Binghamton in the exceptional academic environment that our campus provides. We are all proud of your accomplishments and your successes. As you transition to the next stage of your life, you're embarking on a new journey our campus has provided a world-class academic environment for you, an environment that we're always working hard to improve. When we talk about the excellence of our campus, we are not referring to the bricks and mortar. We are really talking about the people, the faculty, the staff, and the students who have really made Binghamton University and the Watson School into what it is. One of the top academic institutions in the nation, known for its excellence across the country and across the globe. Your Watson School has been and, and will always be dedicated to education, dedicated to our principal customer, the student. We all share an awesome feel Think about the changes you have seen just in your lifetime. Imagine the changes that you will be leading in the future. A few thoughts to consider as you progress through your career. Listen, be brave and inquisitive, but also respectful. Seek a mentor, be a mentor. You will have challenges and perhaps you will make missteps. Learn from them. Each experience is, is valuable. 
with positives and negatives. Embrace diversity. Always keep learning. Lifelong learning is a necessity in our domain. Stay engaged with the Watson School and your campus. Enjoy the ride. Remember, we are in the greatest field ever with endless possibilities. Congratulations to you all once again. I now have the distinct pleasure and honor of welcoming Dr. Geraldine Noel McDonald, recipient of the university's honorary degree with the Doctor of Letters. Honorary degrees recognize individuals who by their outstanding service to the university, the state, the country, and humanity exemplify the mission and purposes of Binghamton University. Their lives and their achievements stand as an inspiration to all of us. Dr. Noel, Geraldine Noel McDonald earned her bachelor's degree in psychology here at Binghamton and her master's from the Watson School's precursor, the School of Advanced Technology. Earlier in her career, she served as director of computing services Associate Vice President for Computing Services and Acting Vice President for Administration at Binghamton University. She left Binghamton University to work at AOL, where she rose to Senior Vice President for Global Access Networks. She followed up her career at AOL as a managing partner in G. McDonald Consulting. She was named one of the top 25 unsung heroes of the net it is clear that Dr. Geraldine Noel McDonald has made significant impacts in the information technology field and of course, for the Watson School. Her contributions to establish the Jack Noel Scholarship for Women in Computer Science and Engineering, the McDonald Family Prize in Senior Design, the Noel McDonald Commons have created a lasting impact for students of the Watson School. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Geraldine Noel McDonald to the podium. Thank you, Dean Shahari. Wow, when you hear a wonderful introduction like that, you can only be grateful that you had an opportunity to be part of so many and exciting, wonderful things and that you could make a difference. Thank you to President Stanger, Dean Traheri, and all of the Binghamton faculty and administration and staff for this wonderful award. Congratulations to all the parents, grandparents, family, and friends that are here today to enjoy the graduation of the class of 2017. And I save my biggest congratulations to the graduates themselves. Give yourself a huge round of applause. You have worked hard and deserve this special day. Appreciate your families for all their love and support that helped make this day possible, especially on those days when you were not so lovable. <laughs> Seriously, I hope your years here at Binghamton will be with you for the rest of your life. Binghamton starts with the best and the brightest. With that raw material, everyone that is part of this community works to enhance and improve to create a flourishing, successful person. There are many themes a graduation speaker can address. We can talk about pride, hard work, invention, investigation, or the philosophy of life. Today, I want to focus on the word different. Different can mean what we look like, what we think, or what we believe. We can do something different, or we can make a difference. To quote a very famous frog, Kermit, it is not easy being green. In his song, at first Kermit laments his difference. 
and then comes to value his own uniqueness. Whether we are different, do something different, or make a difference, all of these endeavors allow us to draw upon strengths. I am a first-generation American. My parents were both Holocaust survivors who left Europe under threats for their life and found their way to the United States where they met, married, built a family, and a business. My siblings and I were different. English was not the first language in our home, and things like peanut butter were a foreign food. My family's differences gave me strength and encouraged me to carve out a path for myself. They also gave me perspective and insights which would influence many for future decisions. I am also a woman. I like to think that some of the non-traditional things I did helped in some small way to make the path easier for those that came after me. I was one of only three girls in my high school honors math class. What things made a difference? My parents wanted this for me. They helped me understand that it was important. I liked math and believed that I belonged in the class even if I was a girl. When I graduated from Binghamton, there were a few conventional jobs for women teaching, nursing, being a librarian or a social worker. I chose a different path, which in general was perplexing to my family and friends. You're working on a computer? What's a computer? Yes, there was a time, not really all that long ago, that having a color TV in your house was considered leading edge technology. When I started work with computers and technology, I was often the only woman in the room. Right here at Binghamton, teaching undergraduate computer programming classes, I was usually the only woman in the room. As my career progressed, I strived to make a difference. I could foster diversity with my employees. I could make every effort to be inclusive. Whether you think you are different or not, there is always a way to recognize and work with the diversity of others and draw strengths from the associations you have formed. Being different does not mean we don't have to get the basics right, like show up on time for work, be clean and neat, complete your projects, and always go for 110% in every effort. Be the one to make sure the lunchtime group includes all of your team. All too often I see groups of people out to lunch and everyone in the group looks the same. Diversity should not stop at the office doorstep. Be the one whose project team is diverse and inclusive. Be the one that extends kindness. Make your voice heard with dignity. And be the one to hear all opinions, listen and not be judgmental. Your years here at Binghamton has given, have given you so much. Sometimes it's not easy to see at first. I remember having to fulfill a philosophy requirement as an undergraduate. It was really not my cup of tea. There was one course called Methods of Logic. I looked at the book and found truth tables, Venn diagrams, and logical analysis. It fulfilled the requirement. Little did I know at the time that those principles of logic are the foundation of every computer circuit and would with, be with me forever. In addition, the friendships that work, the work on projects inside and outside of the classroom will also last a lifetime. Remember to call on those resources. They will always be there for you. I wish all of you well I congratulate my fellow honorary degree recipients this weekend, and I am so proud of all the graduates of the class of 2017. Use the power of being different to be the most powerful you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Geraldine. Now I'm pleased to introduce Gary Keibel, President of the Alumni Association Board. He would like to share congratulations on behalf of the Alumni Association.
On behalf of the Binghamton University Alumni Association, it's my pleasure to congratulate you on your fantastic accomplishments. And to celebrate this very special moment, I'm pleased to give each and every one of you a free yet very valuable gift today. Lifetime membership in the Binghamton University Alumni Association. You're welcome. <laughs> this is something truly valuable. You are now a member of an organization with more than 127,000 members in all 50 states and over 100 countries. Your Alumni Association is one of the most important professional and social organizations you will ever join. Believe me, it's a hot ticket. We have almost 4,000 new members joining this weekend alone. I'm sure you've walked around campus at some point or another wearing a Binghamton sweatshirt or hat. As you move on from school, I encourage you to continue to wear Binghamton on your sleeve. You are now an emissary and ambassador for Binghamton. Your success reflects on the school and the success of other alumni reflects on you. Among our many accomplished alumni are CEOs and senior management at leading corporations, leaders in the financial and legal industries, the most talented engineers, teachers, nurses, social workers, and professionals of all kinds, as well as media personalities, movie stars, and even a United States congressman. Does anyone here think they can accomplish something similar? All right, good. I look forward to the day that there's a poster of accomplished alumni about you on campus. So as you graduate today, I ask you to take three very important steps. Number one, make sure that you are always digitally connected to Binghamton. Like us on our Facebook page, join our LinkedIn groups, follow us on Instagram and elsewhere, and you must visit the alumni page on the Binghamton University website to make sure that your information in our alumni directory, Be Connected, is always up to date. We can't find you for opportunities if you don't first find us. Number two, don't be a stranger. The Alumni Association holds over 70 events around the country each year. Sign up, show up, and have some fun with your fellow alumni. And number three, make new Binghamton connections. When you come across another Binghamton graduate, use that common bond to open a door. Tell older alumni how amazing campus looks. I'm giving this same message to all graduates this weekend. You and I are now connected forever and I'm looking forward to connecting with my new 4,000 new best friends. You're a Bearcat for life, and I'm honored to be in the same alumni association as you. Congratulations. Thank you, Gary. At this time, we will begin to recognize the accomplishments of our baccalaureate degree candidates. Dean Trihari, please come forward for the presentation of our baccalaureate degree candidates from the Thomas J. Watson School of Engineering and Applied Science. First, we will recognize students who have achieved Latin honors. Latin honors are based on a student's cumulative grade point average. We recognize three levels of achievement, cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude. The names of the candidates for these honors appear in the commencement program. We will not announce each by name, but we shall recognize students attending today by having them stand in place. Candidates graduating cum laude, please stand or please rise. You may be seated. Candidates graduating magna cum laude, please rise. You may be seated. Candidates graduating summa cum laude, please rise. You may be seated. My congratulations to all of you on your outstanding academic achievements. President Stenger, as Dean of the Thomas J. Watson School of Engineering and Applied Science, I'm pleased to present to you these candidates 
who have fulfilled all their baccalaureate degree requirements as prescribed by the faculty. As you cross the stage, please pause for a picture with the president, the dean and the department chair. Will Professor Kai Ming Ye, department chair for biomedical engineering, please approach the podium. So will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees from the biomedical engineering department please rise? <laughs> so President Stenger and Dean Shrihari, as chair of the biomedical engineering department, I present to you and these candidates who have fulfilled or their bachelor degrees requirement as prescribed by the faculty. Student Marshal Catherine Marr, and please lead the candidates to the platform so that all may receive the recognition for their academic achievement. Carolyn Ma biomedical engineering, Thomas Robert Hayes, Rushab Pradeep Shah, Christopher Ramsey, Emma F. Smith, Lauren E. Nardakji, Charles M. Sheftik III, Robert D. Fanning, David J. Beeman, Christopher G. Meyer, Jessica Grace Niemeyer. Rebecca A. Weisenberger. Zachary Christian Galuzzo. Michael Z. Kubik. Joseph B. Carnicelli. Regan Murphy Kiefer. Amanda L. Lau. Nicola Suma. Victoria D'Ambrosio, Jacob William Prega, Jeremy Yigal Nazaria, Jason John Cutiara, Bryn Fitzgerald Lapis, Nathaniel Joseph Fisher, Barr Stern, Melissa Ann Sharkey, Dominic Joseph Parozzi, <laughs> Yu Jung Pak, Kevin Liu, Fraser Ian Leslie, Ian Thomas Walsh, Christina Tatalia, Edward J. Christie, Cody Ryan James Dickout, Kaylee Megan Hill. Samantha Jo Schnitzer, <laughs> Stephanie Tsilawa, <laughs> Joyce F. Ajagabi, Armando Ruben Agosto, Ulysse, Ulysse Trinidad, <laughs> Dylan Craig Japko, <laughs> Ely Denma. Aaron Thomas Armstrong, Jason Wu, Ashley Kimberly Levy, Sai Ken Ho Hung, Daniel M. Huang, Sophia Fu, Chatham J. Borsch, Matthew M. Morales, David Charles Lewis, Jacob Andrew Vogel, Adam Adler, Trey Harrison McIntyre. That's it. Good. Good. 
Candidates, please be seated. Will Professor Wei Yi Meng, Department Chair for Computer Science, <clears throat> please approach the podium. We have the candidates for the bachelor's degrees from the Computer Science Department, please rise. President Stenger and Dean Sarah Hurry, as department chair of the computer science department, I present to you these candidates who have fulfilled all their bachelor's degree requirements as prescribed by the, fa by the faculty. Student marshals Alexander Strong and Nebi Mert Ardeen, please lead the candidates to the platform so that all may receive recognition for their academic achievement. Alexander J. Strong. <laughs> Nebi Mert Aiden. <laughs> Matthew L. Spagnoli. <laughs> Nicholas Senni. <laughs> John M. Poblador. <laughs> Matthew Charles Myers. <laughs> Xiong Kim. Robert J. Valenti. Connor Michael Hennessy, Samantha N. Caston, Matthew C. Pearl, Joe H. Kim, Kyle Schneider, David Michael Krein, He Hao, Yixian Wing, Maggie Wu, Yu Fan Hu, Lillian Shi, Sharon P. Slattery, James E. Bomisod, Joshua Michael Cavaluzzi, Jack M. Fisher, Eric Jeffrey Langert. Amanda Ray Kobioka, <laughs> Alexandra Feldberg, Anika Alexis Weisinger, Charles N. DiGiovanna, Scott David Frazier, Jerry P. Simbo, Ryan W. Simpson, Daniel J. Martin, Jonathan DeRoger, Martin J. Lobiando, Nicholas D. Galina, Joshua Richard Pratt, Mariuxi A. Yagual, Thomas Matthew, Raymond S. Bauman, Darren M. Frody, Jacob L. Zwickler, Jasper Q. Andrew, Dalen Fishman, Jordan Y. Schulman, Peter Michael Devlin, Jordan Ratzis, Adam L. Bushler, Thomas Joseph Batista, Emily T. Cox. Lamar S. Arias, Dylan Ferrara, Jennifer Gordon, Eric M. Scagnelli, Vladislav Peterson, Tamar A. Waba, U. H. Chen, Den Dennis M. Plotkin, Stephen M. Huang, Miguel Lumapat, Alan Plotko, 
Taylor Foxall. Max D. Slocum. Fu Fu Win Hlang. Goksu Selen Yilmaz. Mert Odzul. James Ryan Perry Akus. Thomas Daniel Modal. Stephen James Nowitzki. Momowunmi Linda Adamola. Skylar M. Clemens. Ahmet Khan Rama. Helen Gulu. Mustafa Inank Sarikcha. Ahmet Gurkantik. Ere Tufan. Ali Arda Ekker. Khan Atahan Igdebeli. Osan Dusan. Emre Aiden. Onu Oskaraman. Sapex and Corson. Yigit Hulu. Anil Algu. Dokan Aziz Kelleker. Basak Erdogan. Khan Keller. Berk Kokugulu. Candidates, please be seated. I am pleased to introduce Associate Dean Peter Patel. As Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Administration, I have the pleasure of introducing our, uh, our student speaker, Stephanie Salwa. During her time in the Watson School, Stephanie demonstrated an impressive level of leadership, along with her enthusiasm and commitment to the Watson School and Binghamton University. She was active in Alpha Omega Epsilon, a group in which she served as president, vice president, judicial chair, and historian. She was active in the local chapter of the National Society of Black Engineers, in which she held the offices of treasurer and fundraising chair. And she was a member of Uyai Nua, a group of students dedicated to preserving African traditions through music and dance performance. She served as vice president of that group as well. But above all, during her time at BU, Stephanie has demonstrated a commitment to helping others. As a resident assistant, she organized a Soul Hope Party, where residents used old denim jeans to create shoe parts for children in Uganda to, uh, to prevent Jigger's flea infestation. And she organized a hunger banquet to dramatize the inequitable distribution of food and resources in today's world. This dedication to helping others led her to select biomedical engineering on her path to becoming a doctor of medicine. Please give a warm welcome to Sef Stephanie Salwa. <laughs> Good morning, friends, faculty, squirming siblings, parents, and most importantly, the Spring 2017 Watson Class of Engineering and Applied Sciences. We made it. It's hard to explain the feeling that I'm feeling right now. A certain sense of euphoria, you may call it. It truly is an honor to be able to speak to you this morning. And I thank you all for allowing me this space. As a toddler, 
My father taught me to differentiate between a Phillips and a flat tip screwdriver before I even learned to write my name. We'd spend hours fixing all manner of machines from bringing down car engines to learning the circuitry in my first remote controlled car. As a teenager, I often spent hours immersed in novels, painted murals on the walls of my home, banged on the piano until my parents begged me to go to sleep, and spent so much time in the pool, friends often teased that I would grow a set of gills. So you can imagine my confusion when people started to ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm sure that at one point, you've all been asked this question. And at some point, the excitement that you used to get from answering this question soon changed to anxiety. It took me a long time to realize that it's not because we don't have an idea of what we want to do with our lives or that we're not passionate about anything, but because we're passionate about a lot of things, be it starting a LAN party in the basement of LNG, <laughs> participating in Greek God, or leading your team to victory at Trivia Wednesdays. And for our parents, Trivia Wednesdays is basically when we all gather Professor Tom Marty's office hours for a fun senior design de-stress session. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? It used to be this delightful exercise when we were children to now the thing that keeps us up at night. The purpose of this question was to inspire us. It was to inspire us to dream and to dream about the endless possibilities that life has to offer us. As a young adult, however, it does just the opposite. Because when someone asks you what you want to be, you simply can't reply with 15 different things. Growing up in families that value academia, I started to realize that despite my parents saying that I could be anything that I wanted to be, they really meant lawyer, doctor, or engineer. And some of you well-intentioned adults, and you parents are probably guilty of this too. And you're most likely to tease us and say, oh, that's cute, but you simply can't be a rapper and an engineer too. You have to choose, preferably the latter. <laughs> My mother used to say to me, Steffi, don't be a jack of all trades and a master of none. My naivety led me to believe that this meant to focus on one thing, and that one thing was becoming an engineer. In the past four years, we have focused on mastering our skills in our respective majors, often putting aside our passions to get our homework in at 11.59 p.m., skipping class to do more work for the same class. And when our prayers were answered for a snow day, watching all our Harper friends play outside while we rejoiced at the extra two days we got to fit four more chapters on our eight and a half by 11 cheat sheet. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? I believe that you don't have to choose. Embrace your many passions. Follow your curiosity and explore your complexities because they're what makes you who you are. And you must not let others try to define this for you or confine you to a simple box. As human beings, we are complex by nature. Think for a moment as to what makes you who you are. More than one thing comes to mind. And this is why we all dread that interview question. Could you please describe yourself in three words? And you think for a moment trying to sum up an entire 20 plus years of growth and change into just three little words. And it's honestly just quite impossible. Why? Because you are way more than just three words. In five or even 20 years from now, when you look back at your old yearbook photos or your diploma hanging on the wall, I hope that you will have remembered to stay true to yourself. Four years ago, when I first stepped foot on the Binghamton University campus, with the only reference to American college life being my parents, who graduated over 30 years ago and left the country, and reruns of Legally Blonde and American Pie, I was afraid of the stereotype and box that people would put me in as an engineer. And as if though that wasn't enough, I joined a sorority. Shout out to my sisters of Alpha Omega Epsilon, 
professional engineering sorority. We like to add that last part so that people think that we spend our time playing with Arduinos instead of arguing about what our next recruitment theme is gonna be, Coachella or Harry Potter. <laughs> but in these four years, I have had the privilege of being surrounded by you all, engineers who have shattered the nerdy, quiet, antisocial stereotype that people often attribute to us. And it's my hope that you continue to push these boundaries even as we part ways. In my father's mother tongue, there's a saying, which means competition exhausts the lungs. As we continue on to the next part of our journey, do not compare yourselves to others and what they are doing. You have to embrace your value, your talents, and your strengths. Because to be true to ourselves, we have to lose the fear of failing. Live outside the box. Be that rapper or that artist. Engineering is not your only identity. It is only one of your many superpowers. Congratulations to the Watson class of 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for your remarks. Now I would like to request Professor Doug Somerville Department Chair for Electrical and Computer Engineering to please approach the podium. Will the candidates for degrees from the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department please rise? President Stanger and Dean Srihari, as Chair of the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department, I present you these candidates who have fulfilled all their bachelor's degree requirements as prescribed by the faculty. Student Marshal Brian O'Connor, please lead the candidates to the platform so that all may receive recognition for their academic achievement. Brian Douglas O'Connor. Colin Scott Diamond. Mike, Michael G. Goble. Tamara Aharoni. Christopher John Esso. Joshua M. Montague. Alexander Thomas Rando. Charles D. Miller. Timothy William Dowd. Alec William Breton, Ethan Robert Hagel, James Francis Tuturo, Jenny Liang, Alexander Whalen, Daniel Joseph Picone, Ryan Gummersheimer Whitney, William A. Carmona, Ruben Peña, Maxime Maurice, Blake S. Haddad, Clayton J. Manget, Matthew V. Guerra, Thomas C. Bonney, Alex Vangeli Santilis, Kietra Will Elizabeth Wiggins, Ulas A. Srivastava, Victor Tong, Joseph Rocco Nicosia, Tanner John Witt, Yuri Andre Boat, Alexander C. Jackson, Charles S. Eckert, Nasreen L. Hinawi, Doi An Bui, Han Yok Ni, Hao Cheng Zhu, Tian Yi Du, 
Tongsha. Anthony Gino Altamura. Megan E. Doherty. Ryan Michael Yarrington. Justin Robert Barlow. Wen Hui Chow. Kyle Brandon Lockhart. Alexander G. Gurkov. Andrew Wu. Samuel Lee. Stephen Chu. Daniel J. Hart. Daniel J. Muller. Stephen M. Popovich. Brendan M. Barnes. Mark A. Giardini. John Liam White. Jason J. Chicatelli. Mei Li Ang. Kevin J. Felice. Kurt K. Ambos. Daniel Pesci. Alexander Stephen Krupski. Brian Charles Applebaum. Kayla N. Rodriguez. Ryan Douglas Empson. Samir Kalia. Jack A. Giunta. Timothy S. Kim. Henry Andrade. William Hughes Clayton. Jason N. Smith. Ivan D. Sarmiento Churi. Jason Mark Masergian. Masergian. Doc No. Ryan P. Mallon. Andrew T. Kennett. Mohammed Samir Salim. Shiming Son. Pavel V. Berzovsky. David Jing. Nelson Lee. Jiahawu. Richard Maximilian Seibert. Siaki Tete Narti. Brenda Tran. Emily Taylor Hill. Lucy Lin. Sarah Francesca Prechtel. Zuzana Rybikan. Rebecca. Christina Chen. Cassidy Chen. Ian Raymond Shears. Brandon J. Orkoszewski. Eugene Michael Marecki. Evan Philip Kearney. Adam Jacob Weiner. C. Pak Kim. Yannick Ulian. Raymond W. Chia, Yu Xuan Sun, Wei Si, Shi He, Shen Chi Huang, Xin Yu Liang, Candidates, please be seated. I now have the pleasure of introducing our second student speaker, Danielle Goldinski. Over the past four years, Danielle has developed an impressive set of accomplishments. As a freshman, 
She worked on a team to redesign a university dining hall to increase efficiency and customer satisfaction. Her team's recommendations were implemented in the Hinman Dining Hall. As a senior in industrial and systems engineering, she worked on a team to develop a functioning electronic circuit made of nylon. In between, she served as an undergraduate course assistant in our engineering design division, mentoring Watson freshmen, helping those students make the transition from high school to college, and helping to set each of them on their own paths to success. As a UCA, she took the opportunity to write a research paper comparing student classroom experiences titled The Female Role in a Male Dominant Field. Danielle served on the e-board of Alpha Epsilon Phi, Pi Mu Chapter, and first as a Vice President for Social Responsibilities, and most recently as Vice President for New Member Education. Please welcome to the podium, Danielle Goldinski. Thank you. Good morning, family, friends, faculty, administrators, and of course, my fellow graduates. I think one of the most common questions asked from us is, why engineering? Why did we even bother choosing this mess of a major and getting ourselves into this whole long story? Well, as common of a question as I think it is, I find myself blaming the same two people I have my entire life, my parents. You see, when I was first applying to colleges, I really had no idea what I had a passion for, let alone what I envisioned for a career. So, in spite of the black hole of being undecided, I chose to take the advice of the people who knew me best. Unfortunately for me, my parents' advice was just a little biased, considering they both came from engineering backgrounds themselves. You're always coming up with creative solutions, my mom said. You'll have a job out of college, my dad said. My naive adolescent self thought that those two factors alone would keep me engaged and motivated through four years of math and science. Well, it's safe to say that I was wrong, as you all can attest, but my parents' push, regardless of their reasoning, was right. As I look back on my college experience, I can't help but realize how much of my story has been written because of my acceptance to the Thomas J. Watson School of Engineering and Applied Science. Without my story, without my acceptance rather, my story would lack many characters. It would be a story short of providing the wisdom it was intended to share, a story with fewer friendships and scarcer allies, and it would be a story that I would not be able to share with all of those sitting in front of me now. Instead, my story is a complete one, because when I look out into the rows of fellow graduates, I don't just see my classmates. I see the first friends I ever made at Binghamton, and I see the people I call my best friends today. I see the faces of those who helped me study, and I hear the voices who patiently and talked me off the ledge when I contemplated switching majors. I see 400 minds eager to solve problems and 800 hands ready to create those solutions. And above all, I see the potential to reach incredible feats. Unfortunately, however, feats are not always easy to achieve by oneself. Sports, music, politics, even our own senior design project have tested our ability to work as a team. Being forced to work with people we might not always agree with, compromise on our own ideas, even, even realize that a team member might have a better strategy than ourselves. These are all situations we've had to deal with because as I've been reminded time and time again, there is a great difference between feasible and optimal. We are all capable of conceiving a feasible solution, but without testing our idea or comparing it to another, it is merely one iteration of a complex problem. As an engineer, my job, like yours, is to use science when creating solutions. But as an industrial systems engineer, it is also my job to consider the social sciences affected by my solution. And that is why I'd like to share a story with all of you today, one that Dr. Santos actually shared with my class. It is a famous Indian fable that tells the story of six blind men who come across an elephant, each creating his own version of reality based on the experience and perspective that life has given him. Each man attempting to rationalize what was in his presence without the element of sight came up with a different explanation for the creature. He who grabbed hold of the ears thought they were giant fans, the tusk a solid pipe, the tail a rope. Each man used his own perspective to conceptualize the mystery in front of him, one by one delineating the purpose for each body part and piecing together their individual depictions to form the bigger picture. Yes, each man created a feasible solution for the creature, 
but that is all they had individually, correct portrayals of their own perspective. Because without collaboration, they could not transform the details of their vision to, to shape the full solution of their mystery. We as engineering students are trained to take a problem and solve it using the tools we have in front of us and the wit we have attained. Each discipline brings a different area of expertise and a different vantage point from which to look through. Now we may have the luxury of sight, but our inexperience makes us blind to seeing exactly what is the problem in front of us. We must take what we have learned over the course of the past four years and use it to mold our own perspective because the world is filled with problems, one bigger than the next. But what if we can rationalize the details? I know we can make sense of the whole. Now, as we gather here today, commencing a new chapter to our story, I ask myself again, why engineering? My answer, everyone's sitting in front of me now. Because without my choice in major, I probably wouldn't have a reason to be up here today. I would not have gained the friendships, the memories, or the experience that I have here today. And I have all of you to thank for that. It's a rare thing to contribute your college experience to your chosen field of study, but I do. I dedicate my story to the very decision that put me here today, speaking in front of all the people who helped me get here. To the commencement committee, thank you for giving me the opportunity to express my gratitude for what this school has given me, given us. To the professors who have guided our success over the course of the past four years, thank you for sharing your wisdom, and more importantly, appreciating ours. And finally, to those graduating with me, thank you for gifting me with the adventure filled with adventure, triumph, and most importantly, incredible minds to share it with. Congratulations, class of 2017. Time to write your own chapter. Thank you, Danielle, for your remarks. Will distinguished professor Ron Miles, Department Chair for Mechanical Engineering, please approach the podium. Will the candidates for bachelor's degrees from the Mechanical Engineering Department please rise? <laughs> President Stinger and Dean Srihari, as chair of the Mechanical Engineering Department, I present to you these candidates who have fulfilled all their bachelor's degree requirements as prescribed by the faculty. Student Marshal Brian Parsons and Student Marshal Matthew Rafferty, please lead the candidates to the platform so that all may receive recognition for their academic achievement. Brian A. Parsons. Matthew S. Rafferty. Patrick Owen O'Brien. Brian White Savona. Mary Olivia Pulisi. Victor Michael Esposito III, Ryan Peter Kremler, Lauren T. Boston, Peter M. Candidas, Victor Lee, Lucas Panabianco, Stephen Joseph Campagna, Ryan R. Donovan, Emma Christine Keeley, Clinton E. Hastings, Jr., Alexander R. Serrano, Lucas Zena, Jacob Rutter Pomerantz, Alexander Karras, Michael Joseph Wall, Jack B. Dunning, Adam S. Heller, Ethan James Howe, Dimitri Gamatikopoulos, David Charles Mooney, Joshua David Herman, Noah Alexander Hansen, Jackson R. Ogden, Johan Camillo Avia.
George LaRue, Eric Michael O'Connor, Thomas J. Goler, Edgar Escamilla, Stephen William Snelson, Adam D. New, Justin V. Bopp, Christopher D. Hackett, Corey Michael Zelnicker, Stephen Vladimir Didi, Andrew Scott Parsons, Jr., Simon Spitzero, Jesse Blair Linneman, Devin Alexander Luce, Ibrahima Balde, Robert Carl Dean, Bryce James Kingsley, Jacob C. Simmons, Jacob Edwards, Eric Chong, William James Powell, Kara Elizabeth Magulahan, Ashley Cecilia Talbot, Melissa Rachel Gross, Victor Yu, Daniel Thornton, Jesus Espinosa, Brian Thomas Luca, Daniel S. Miller, Sydney Benson Gutterman, Anya Maria Trevino, Catherine E. Degnan, Thomas R. Benson, Michael Dominic Spano, Ethan G. Hauseman, Jae Hyung Jun, Jeff Jeffrey J. Chen, Michael S. Rottenberg, Garrett Michael Sklar, Anthony M. DeTuro, Daniel Jordan Patterson, Thomas J. Patella, <clears throat> Jin Ying Zhang, Rachel H. Tu, Danielle Demetrius Locas, Syed Ali Abdullah, Justin Wu, D. Wu, Jin Wu Kim, Hyung Wan Kim, Joshua D. Manro, Kyle Patrick Stubing, Andrew Christopher Brigette, Aaron J. Foran, Philip Michaelides, Zachary Curtis Smith, Charles Garth Gochoyak, Kevin Kong, Jessica Mui, Doris Wong, John Patrick Norton III, Juan Sebastian Arias, Brian McKenna, Robert M. Brown, Stephen Anthony Alfano, Jr., Candidates, please be seated. Will Professor Mark Pollux, Professor and Undergraduate Director for System Science and Industrial Engineering, please approach the podium. 
Will the candidates for the bachelor's degree from System Science and Industrial Engineering please rise? <laughs> President Stanger and Dean Shuhari, as professor and undergraduate program director of the System Science and Industrial Engineering Department, I present to you these candidates who have fulfilled all their bachelor degree requirements as prescribed by the faculty. Student Marshal Lillian Kravitz, please lead the candidates to the platform so that all may receive recognition for their academic achievement. Lillian Kravitz. Abigail J. Sachs. Paige Novi. Nitsan Hillel. Maria Zakaris. Danielle Goldinski. Thomas Vincent Franchini. Niels E. DeStefano. Harrison S. Meisel. Michael Paul Castellucci, Ryan P. Crossan, Matthew R. Murphy, Christopher E. Patrizio, Daniel Allen Schultz, Brandon J. Kerr, Kevin James Harris, Clement Luke Orolio. Hannah Sasha Kopit. Eliana T. Toribio. Eric A. Squires. Ashley Kimberly Lau. Elise Catherine Grohl. Jesse Wong. John Oliver Rosser III. Muslim and Mutlu. Kyle Hayes, Benjamin Jeffrey Dobkin, Taylor Scott Goudreau, Matthew T. Pilotti, Max Hobson Flood, Alan Mitchell Nesfader, Sabrina de Oliveira Candido, Alexis C. Malatesta. Jesse Aaron Bowden. Ashkin Alexander Assemi. Michael R. Doyle. Jacob C. Grossinger. Stephen Luis Valvo. Brian P. Doyle. Daniel J. Happe. Hannah Marie Marolo, Joel A. Schwartz, Nicholas Peter Pascal, Todd Michael Lewis, Jr., Mary S. Kozlowski, Melanie A. Richardson, Miranda Lisette Cobb, Lauren Blanche Andres, Amy Catherine Lindelof, Ryan M. Ziemba, David Haim, Jared Stanley Fiacco, Ryan T. McGinn, Ryan J. Eckhoff, Claire Danaher Reardon. Jonathan E. Sabin. Ryan A. Cagnetta. Guillermo Herrera. Paramvir Singh. Santiago Diaz. Nick Liu. Kashin Aaron Chan. Jamie Ha. Will all 
baccalaureate degree candidates, please rise. <clears throat> President Stenger. <laughs> President Stenger, I'm honored to present to you these candidates for the various baccalaureate degrees by the university. For those who have successfully completed all degree requirements by the authority vested in me by the Chancellor and the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York and the Board of Regents of the University of the State of New York, I confer on each of you the appropriate baccalaureate degree with all the rights and privileges accompanying it. On behalf of the Binghamton University community, I congratulate you all for this well-earned accomplishment. As is customary upon conferral of the baccalaureate degree, you may now move the tassel on your cap from the right to the left. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, parents, partners, and friends, I present to you the Binghamton University Thomas J. Watson School of Engineering and Applied Science graduating class of 2017. Everyone, please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your hats as we sing the Binghamton University alma mater. We invite everyone to join in singing the refrain and the second verse. The lyrics may be found on the back of the commencement program. The spring commencement proceedings of the State University of New York at Binghamton are now concluded. We kindly ask the audience to remain seated for the academic recessional. Once the academic recessional is completed, please exit as soon as you're able to 
to allow the families of the next ceremony graduates to enter. <laughs>